Silver has a lot of things going for it. With economic uncertainty, it's a really good item to purchase. Hi everyone, welcome to Campbell's Coins. In this video, I'm gonna explore five reasons you should be buying silver now, coming up. The information in this episode has been carefully compiled from sources believed to be reliable, but the accuracy of the information is not guaranteed. I am not a licensed financial analyst, I'm a precious metal strategist. This episode is not intended as investment advice. The opinions expressed are mine. I cannot guarantee any silver or gold products you purchase will rise in value. You should be aware that prices will fluctuate and may go down as well as up. Strategies mentioned in this episode may not be suitable for you. Past performance is not an indication of future profits. The decision as to how much to allocate is strictly up to you and or your financial advisor. I honestly think you should stack gold in addition to silver, but silver will give you a greater return over gold. The reason I state this is the gold to silver ratio. I've made a video on the gold to silver ratio and that can be found here, but let's summarize it a bit in this video. This isn't the ratio gold and silver mined out of the ground, but the price ratio of gold and silver to one another. This ratio changes daily and as of doing this video hovers around 70 to 1. 70 ounces of silver will buy you one ounce of gold. This ratio is extremely high and we only saw levels this high during the Great Depression, World War II, 1991, and of course, most recently, 2018, 2019, and 2020. Just this last March and April, we saw it hit an all-time high of 124 to 1. What does this mean? If you bought 124 ounces of silver in March, that would be the price equivalent to one ounce of gold. So for you, I have 124 ounces of silver, and that would have equaled one ounce of gold back in March. Right now the ratio is 71. So you can sell 70 of that 124 ounces of silver and get one ounce of gold. What does that mean for you? Let's take 70 out. So now we have 70 ounces of silver, and that equals one ounce of gold. I'm just gonna leave that there as a reference. Now it takes 70 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold. It takes less silver to sell now to get the same amount of gold when the ratio was higher. In the example I gave of 124 ounces of silver, it would also mean that you get this one ounce bar of gold, but you also have 54 ounces of silver remaining. So if you bought 124 ounces of silver at the height of the gold to silver ratio, and now it's at 70 to one, you decide I'm gonna sell. So all of this silver that we just took off, if you decided I'm gonna sell my 70 all right, fine, you sell off 70. That means that you get your one ounce of gold plus the leftover silver. Before, it took you all of this silver to get that one. So as the ratio drops, it takes less and less silver to buy that one ounce of gold. It is extremely beneficial to get silver when the gold to silver ratio is high. One caveat I should mention here is the gold to silver price ratio is based on spot price. If you're buying American Silver Eagles for 35 each, your ratio will be smaller no matter what price level you're buying at. So for instance, right now it's 70 to one. So as of filming this, it's the 2nd of September, 2020. The gold spot is 1954 and the silver spot is $27.70. If you were buying American Silver Eagles for 35 a piece, you take the spot price of gold and divide it by the cost of each American Silver Eagle, and that would be 55. So if you were buying 
American Silver Eagles for $35, your ratio is going to be 55.8 to 1. The reason I say this is historically the price of silver to gold has been 15 to 1. So 70 to 1 is way, way out of bounds. 124 to 1 is even further out of bounds. And this ratio is bound to fall. And when it does, silver's value will rise and close in on gold. Just eight years ago, when the price of gold and silver took off, this ratio is down to 31 to 1. So it isn't a far-fetched thought. If you take into account silver's rarity, which I will go over in a little bit, this ratio should be even less. Silver is currently less abundant than gold above ground. You heard me correctly. With industry gobbling up silver, silver has become more rare than gold. Conventionally, silver is mined out of the ground at an eight to one ratio to gold, meaning for every one ounce of gold that is mined out of the earth, eight ounces of silver is mined. That would mean more silver exists, right? This would be true if it weren't being used for industry or medical or for clothing or for a thousand of other things. In 1950, there was an estimated 10 billion ounces of above ground silver and only 1 billion ounces of above ground gold. Today, those numbers have flipped. Now there is an estimated 6 billion ounces of gold and about 2 billion ounces of silver. It's estimated that over 50 billion ounces of silver has been mined out of all of history, human history. But most of this is lost due to industrial use or gone from not being recycled. Besides industry, most silver is being pulled out of the ground as a byproduct of mining other metals like copper and zinc. The demand for silver in industrial uses is growing. More cars are becoming electric. More electronics are being made. More solar panels are going into homes. California signed into law, all new homes built after 2020 are required to have solar panels. What do you think? Will demand for silver increase or decrease as the years go on? During the economic crisis of the 80s and 2008, we saw silver skyrocket in price. How was this silver demand met? Constitutional silver and other bullion was melted down. If silver is so abundant, why are people and companies forced to melt down constitutional coins and other bullion down? It just doesn't make sense for them to do this unless the actual supply is severely dried up. Silver is the second most versatile commodity in the world next to oil. It is vastly undervalued compared to gold and other commodities. Part of the reason why is because silver is used in a variety of products and the companies producing these products would like to receive silver for as cheap as possible. Silver has been driven to an industrial metal instead of being treasured as a precious metal since the crime of 1873, and I will touch on that in a little bit. It is a little harder than gold and is very ductile and malleable. Pure silver has the highest electrical and thermal conductivity of all metals and possesses the lowest contact resistance. It is also the most reflective metal. But with all these uses comes high demand and it is being used to the point of extinction. It is vital to our way of life. Silver is used in a variety of products and situations because of its antimicrobial properties. It is used in personal deodorants. Throughout history, silver was used to help milk from spoiling. They are using silver nanoparticles to purify waters in an effort to replace chlorine used in pools. NASA astronauts drink water purified by silver instead of using chlorine. Due to its antimicrobial properties, silver is woven into lab coats to prevent cross-infection between doctors, staff, and patients. For this same reason, silver is also used in yoga pants, workout shorts, pants, and shirts. Silver nanoparticles are used in refrigerators, air conditioners, vacuum cleaners, filters, all sterilizing up to 650 different types of bacteria. Silver-wrapped bandages help slow bacterial growth and promote healing from burns and wound victims. It can prevent disease from bacterial buildup in pipes, connections, and water tanks. Silver is embedded into glove fingertips to be used on touchscreens. Touchscreens require bioelectrical energy to move the screens around, and when gloves are worn, they block that current. Silver is woven into the fabric to conduct that current through the gloves. Silver acetate has been used to help people quit smoking. 
It is used as a biocide in wood preservation. Historically, silver was used mostly in photography because of its light sensitivity for photographs. This hasn't diminished as silver is used in our phones. Silver-coated quartz tiles protect NASA satellites and stations from solar radiation. Silver is used on membranes for light switches, televisions, telephones, microwaves, computer keyboards, children's toys. Layers of silver on metallic parts reduce friction and improve performance. Ball bearings used in fighter jet engines are electroplated with silver because silver reduces friction and its melting point is 961 degrees Celsius, meaning it easily withstands high temperatures. Silver is used to make stained glass with clay, gum, and turpentine. All 3D printing uses silver. Silver nanoparticles are used in 3D printing ink. Silver is used in TV screens. 150 million ounces of silver are used every year by the petrochemical industry to help produce ethyl oxide and formaldehyde, which are key ingredients for making plastics, including polyester fibers for clothing, handles for cookware, and computer components. Silver surrounds clean energy. We all know that we are heading towards a post-petroleum age, and silver is used heavily to preserve and improve battery life. More and more electric cars are being made, increasing the demand for batteries, which is an increase of silver use. Silver is used in every vehicle produced today, and the amount of silver used in each car grows every year we move towards electrical cars. Batteries manufactured with silver alloys are 35% better than lithium. All circuit boards are printed with silver-based ink. Silver jacketed oxide wires can carry 140 times the electrical load than copper wires can with less than 1% the weight. 100 million ounces of silver are used every year in the solar panel industry. Typical 3x5 solar panels contain 20 grams of silver for their electrical conductivity. These are 2015 figures and the numbers have gone up. Thermal windows used in high rises contain silver to reduce sunlight and heat. Every time you look in the mirror, you're looking at silver. Its reflectivity improves function and it's better than aluminum as silver doesn't react with colored dyes. Silver is used as a media storage to prolong the life of CDs and DVDs by resisting pitting and rust. It is one of the most commonly used forms of jewelry. There are literally thousands of uses for silver, and yet within the Earth's crust, there's only one gram of silver for every 12.5 tons of Earth. With all these uses and its rarity, silver sits at the bottom of the market. Mexico is the world's largest producer of silver with 190 million ounces every year, but a 2018 U.S. Geological Survey estimates Mexico has only five years of silver left. At the time of filming this video, September 2020, that would mean Mexico has three years of silver left. But some people realize silver's worth, going all the way back 5,000 years to ancient Greece where silver was the first metal used as a measure of currency. The silver standard was established to determine the exchange rate of currency to a fixed amount of silver. This silver standard continued in the Roman Empire, China, India, Britain, and the United States. The founding of the United States, our country's founding fathers, established our monetary system in a bimetallic standard, gold and silver. It was predominantly silver because silver was more abundant metal found in the U.S. and our founding fathers wanted and viewed silver to be the money of the people. This all ended in 1873 with the crime of 1873 when silver was demonetized in the U.S. in favor of the gold standard. This resulted in a huge shortage of the money supply which led to the foreclosures of thousands of farms and a seven-year economic depression. I'll go over this topic more in depth in a future video. This led to the free silver movement of the 1890s. Do you know that book, The Wizard of Oz, made a movie about it? Did you know that it's a commentary of the free the silver movement? Dorothy's slippers were originally silver, not ruby. The silver slippers represented the free silver movement of the 1890s. The yellow brick road represented the gold standard. The Cowardly Lion represented William Jennings Bryan, a presidential candidate who ran on the platform of the Free the Silver Movement. 
The slippers in the Wizard of Oz movie were changed from silver to ruby color to show off the new technology of the day, Technicolor. If we are in a period of time where fiat money is seen as holding zero value, silver is an excellent means of barter. It's fractional and can be used to purchase anything from food to land. All you preppers out there should be factoring silver into your needs and strategies. Silver is trashed, gold is treasured. Over half of all the silver mined throughout history has been trashed and currently sits in landfills. An ounce of silver is used in every automobile manufactured today because of the electrical components. But because of its paper price, people don't see it worth the time to scrap the metal. This has mainly been done because silver was more abundant than gold. But silver is becoming tougher to find. Most of the silver mined today is a byproduct of mining other minerals like copper and zinc. The huge silver deposits are disappearing. But compared to gold, silver is insanely cheap. An argument people often make is gold's huge potential as an investment. And they are not wrong. A lot of big financial names out there think that gold will hit 10,000, maybe even 20,000 an ounce in the near future. And a lot of good cases have been made to back up these claims. But what about silver? Do they think silver will languish at 18 or $26 an ounce? I think a lot of people do. I don't think they realize that every market recession, depression, political issue, what have you, silver follows gold. If gold goes down, silver goes down. If gold goes up, silver goes up. Since March 2020, silver has started its move upwards. You can refer back to my comments on the gold to silver ratio. How can this rare, precious metal that comes out of the ground at an 8 to 1 ratio to gold be valued 70 times under the value of gold? That doesn't make any sense. It certainly isn't due to low demand. If you don't think that these numbers are possible for gold and silver, you really aren't paying attention to what's going on in the world and the economic problems that exist in the U.S. and abroad. The derivatives of the nine largest banks is $230 trillion, three times the global economy. No government in the world has that kind of cash for a bailout. The global debt is $253 trillion, 322% above the global GDP. U.S. corporate debt is $10 trillion. And what's interesting is, this is up 50% in just the last 10 years. Private debt, $1.2 trillion. 50% of that is collateralized loan obligations. And our government has been printing money like it's going out of style since the 1980s. In every economic downturn, and speaking in percentages, silver outperforms gold every time. I'm not stacking silver to sell in a year or two. It's an insurance policy for the pending fiat-driven economic collapse. When your fiat currency is completely worthless, who cares what the prices of gold and silver is? We are currently trading in monopoly money. We agreed to give the dollar a value and trade in goods and services based on this value. But this value is being robbed from us. Inflation is killing the value of the dollar. Inflation is caused by the printing of more dollars. Have you noticed your purchasing power diminished over the years? What could $20 in groceries get you just 10 years ago? A lot more than it can today. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying silver is the only way and you shouldn't buy gold. Buy both. I think gold is an excellent store of wealth and every stacker should have some. I'm just giving my reasons for why I feel you need silver, especially now given the paper price. I stack both and I think you should too. If you're worried about silver premiums, buy only generic silver or silver for just a couple dollars over spot. Don't bother with premium silver. You won't get a return on it until the price rises, but you'll have a lower risk. What do you think of my five reasons you should buy silver now? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Campbell's Coins, and that is my two cents.